Good morning po sa ating lahat. No? Uh, ngayon po yung 19th years ng ating church. No? So many struggle po ang dinaanan at uh, yung remnant po, no? ilan lang po yung naiwan. No? So marami po yung, mas marami yung nawala. No? Yung natira, ilan na lang. But we have passed the word of God to other people, especially to young ones. No? Uh, dyan sa likod, kahit may putik, niyadayo namin yung mga bahay dyan. No? Pinupuntaan namin. So, it's a joy to have you in this celebration of 19 years of God's faithfulness in ruling beyond the life of this church. No? And I rejoice heartfully as we look forward to the future love of God is going to do in the life of this church. No? So I don't need to tell you how blessed you are to how blessed we are to have Pastor Kim, uh, our founder, Pastor Kim Jeong, no? a faithful man of God, and thankful that the Lord bless us our pathway to cross. No? Neka cross yung aming landas. First, our pastora, Josephine. He became our family friend no? and spiritual developer. No, kasi po dati ay sa iba rin kami, no? Pero as we seek the word of God, God sent this pastor from Korea. No? Alam natin, ibinigay niya yung buhay niya. He was an airborne, cap- airborne captain in Korea, no? And uh, he quit the service. He left his family in Korea. At pumunta dito, no? So, hanggang siya nga ay uh, he, he passed away, no? 2007. No? At uh, gusto niya makarating din ako sa Korea with him. Uh, together, nakita niyo isang grupo, no? Together with the worship team. But sabi ko, walang may iwan sa church, no? Walang mag-preach. So, nagpaiwan ako. And hindi na siya nakabalik, no? He died there. So, uh, he was uh, relieved by uh, Pastora Josephine. And now, Pastora Josephine, two and a half years ago, she passed away. And Pastor Jay now is the senior pastor of this church. Because, yeah, I know. Sabi nga ni Pastor Kim, uh, kay Pastor Jay, nung high school pa siya, you very, come, uh, very fast become pastor. So, kaya bata pa, naging pastor siya. No? At sabi niya kay Miss Ann, you very fast become pregnant. No? <laughs> Kaya maaga din siya yung nagkaanak. No? So, pag sinabi ng pastor, mapangyayari. Amen. No? Mapangyayari yan. No? Kaya, if you don't mind, I would like you to stand with me. No? To read the verse in the Bible. No? So, can you plus Matthew 7, verse 24? Can we read together? Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and 
puts them into practice. It's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Let's bow our head, let's close our eyes, and let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you for every expression of your goodness, greatness, and graciousness toward us. Above all, we praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is, all, he is our all-sufficient prophet, priest, Lord, and King. We acknowledge that we don't have to wait for you to get here. You are already, already here whether we feel you or not. We pray you manifest yourself to us in a life-changing way. As your spirit may explain for us the wisdom of your word. Father, help us today to strip away the malice, deceit, envy, hypocrisy, and slander to the new, like a newborn infant that we may crave the pure spiritual milk of your word and grow by having tasted of your goodness. I pray that you grant me physical strength, spiritual energy to speak your word with faithfulness, clarity, authority, passion, wisdom, humility, and freedom. And again, as the seed of word that planted in the moistened soil, we know that only you can make it grow. So we reserve for you always the highest praise and glory, full of credit for all the fruit that you come, this, that you come in this time in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pa. You can sit down now. Makakaupo na po kayo. So. So, I would like to talk to you our, uh, about uh, a simply a message uh, built on a firm foundation. No? Kinanta natin kanina. So, if you miss my message, keep my story. Ayan. To get the point of the story was to get the point of the sermon. No? If you miss my message, keep my story. The real sense, this is how the Lord Jesus preached. No? The gospel recorded more than 30 parables. No? May higit na tatlumpong uh, kawikaan. The Lord Jesus told to illustrate the points of his message. Many instances, the parable itself was the message. No? Kailangan lang unawain natin ang parable. No? Lord Jesus talked some kind of experience alongside a spiritual reality in order to reveal the truth to the believer. No? Ginagawan, ginagamit ng Panginoong Jesus ang mga parable yung mga kawikaan para maribil ang katotohanan sa mga believer. Ano po? And conceal the truth from the unbeliever at the same time. No? Para hindi naman, para naman matago ang katotohanan sa mga hindi nananalig o hindi nananampalataya. So, kaya po sa Matthew 7, 24 to 27, no? This is recorded one of the greatest parable of Jesus Christ. No? One of the greatest. It is not as famous of the parable of great Samaritan or as the love of the parable of the prodigal son. No? Mas famous yung good Samaritan at yung prodigal son. 
But this little parable has great significance because of its strategic location. No? The parable of the two builders, no? yung parable ng dalawang magtatayo ng kanilang tahanan, as it is called, is the conclusion of Sermon on the Mount, Mount no? the Lord Jesus teaches recorded in Matthew 5 to 7. No? So ito na yung pinaka-conclusion ng sermon doon sa bundok. No? Itong parable neto ng uh, two builders. Dalawang magtatayo ng kanilang mga bahay, tahanan. No? The dominating thing, theme of this message is stated in Matthew 5 verse 20. No. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teacher of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. No? Sabi sa NLT, New Living Translation, but I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. No? So, kung hindi raw malalampasan natin no, ang katwiran na mga pariseyo at na mga iskriba, hindi tayo makararating, makapapasok sa kingdom ng Panginoon. Amen. So, sabi nga, parang nakakatakot, ano? Kasi alam natin, matwid yung mga pariseyo, matwid yung mga iskriba. Kaya nga, this have to be devastate, devastating news to those who pursued heard words fall from the lips of the Lord Jesus. No? Nakakatakot yung balitang ito. Because in the mind of the people and crowd that day, no one could be more righteous than a scribes and the Pharisees. Noong panahon na yun, alam na mga tao na walang matuwid kundi ang mga pariseyo at ang mga iskriba. Kaya matatakot, di ba? Walang makapapasok sa karian ng Diyos malibang malampasan mo ang makatuwiran, no? ang pagiging matuwid ng mga pare. No? Nakakatakot yan. So they thought that way because they were confused about what true righteousness is all about. Hindi nila alam na mga tao. Sa totoo lang, noong bata pa ako, hindi tayo pwedeng maghawak ng Bible. Isa lang ang pwedeng maghawak ng Bible. Hindi ko alam. Bakit? May tinatago ba daw sa Bible? No po, nung bata pa ko. Youth pa rin ako ngayon. No? 68 pa lang. Amen? So, sabi niya, yung point number one natin, what is true righteousness? No? Sabi yan, submitting ourselves unto the righteousness of God with the righteous standard that is required for citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. No? Kaya daw mag-submit tayo. At Jesus' standard of righteousness no, is not of that human wisdom or trad traditional value. No? Kasi po, noong una, parang human wisdom at saka yung traditional. 
He stated, Jesus stated clearly at the conclusion of John chapter 5 that the member of the kingdom of heaven are to be perfect. No? May, therefore, as their heavenly father is perfect. No? Kailangan daw para tayo maging citizen ng kingdom of heaven be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. Paano ba yan? Eh, lagi ito akong nakakasala, no? So, nagkaroon po ng confusion. So, in Romans chapter, three, ber- chapter 10, verse 3, So, sabi dyan, since they did not know the righteousness of God and so to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. So, ito po yung ginawa ng mga pariseyo, ng mga eskriba, nag-establish sila ng sarili nilang uh, pamantayan to be a righteous, No? So, nagkaroon sila ng standard na ganon. Kaya yung mga tao, takot na takot. Dumadaan pa lang, nagsa-sideways na yan. Para ba yung sa military, pag dumaan yung opisyal, di ba? Sideways ka. No? So, nagkaroon ng... So, Apostle Paul indu- induced them by saying they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. Naging ignorante no sa pagiging matuwid ng Diyos. They have been established their own righteousness. They have not submitting themselves unto the righteousness of God. Hindi sila nagsubmit, kundi nagsarili. No? So the message on these two builder is like two men on downtown finding themselves no, in line together to get a permit to build a house. So ito po, yung istorya ng dalawang builder, parang ganito po yan, pumunta po sila sa isang lugar, at uh, dahil magtatayo sila ng bahay, pumila doon sila sa nagbibigay ng uh, building permit. No? As they waited in line, they begin to check, they, began, they talk each other, Oh, and they, they discover that not only they both building new houses, hindi lang pala sila magtatayo parehos ng bahay, but they are building in the sun, no? and they are going to be neighbor. Magiging magkapitbahay sila. No? Uh, hindi, lang po, hindi naman po sa tabing dagat, kundi yung lugar eh, sandy. No? Hindi ikaw yun, Sandy, ha? Uh, so they both got the permit to begin and begin construction about the same time. No? Sabay sila, nagtayo. No? But they go about the process no? to totally different ways. Magkaiba ang proseso ng ginawa ng dalawang builder nito. No? One man shows up with woods, nails, summers, and all that would needed to erect to erect new house. Lahat ng kailangan, ano? So, but a man across the way shows up, but nothing the shovel. Pala. He begin to dig a hole. So the friend across the way again laid the foundation of his house. Yung isa nag pa, yung isa nag, uh, big, naglagay na ng pundasyon ng kanyang bahay. No? While the man with the shovel just keep digging a hole. The man with the equipment put on the frame on his house. So, ang bilis, ano? Naglagay na siya ng frame sa kanyang bahay. Set a roof. Nilagay na yung bubong. Set the wall of the house. Wow, may dinding na. Ang bilis, No? While the man with the shovel 
Just go part that got farther the whole digging. Patuloy siyang naguhukay. Now, the man with all the equipment was putting the finishing touches. Wow! Ang galing, no? While his new neighbor across the way deeper in the whole digging. No? Patuloy na naguhukay itong isa. So one day, isang araw, the man with shovel wife showed up to bring him lunch. No? She typically did. Ginagawa ito ng asawa niya araw-araw. But that day, she announced she was going to be no, her last day. Huling araw niya na lang magdadala ng pagkain doon sa kanyang asawa. Dahil sabi niya, she said, I can come up here anymore. It's too embarrassing. Sabi niya, nakakahiya na. Sabi niya, the family across over there have his house blessing, warming party, here we're still under the whole digging. Dito tayo, naguhukay pa doon, blessing na, house blessing na, house warming na. No? But as she turned away, Palayo na yung babae. No? Her husband hit something hard in the ground and said, hold on, baby. I think I found what I was looking for. No? Tandali lang, baby. No? Palagay ko na tagpuan ko na itong aking hinahanap. No? I having found something hard in the ground, he then began to wreck his house. No? Sa totoo po, yung mga nagtatayo ng building, yung putik po, inaalis nila yan. Hanggang matagpuan po nila yung matigas na bahagi ng lupa. Pinapalalim nila. This is how this man wrecked his house. No? And on the first night that he was able to spend in the night in his new house, first night, a spade will have it, sabi niya, a terrible storm broke out. No? Unang gabi pa lang niya. The rain fell, the wind blew, and the flood rose. But he slept calmly through it all. Itong taong ito na natiling kalmado, walang di nag-aalala. No? So he was awoken, ginising siya ng kanyang asawa, no? At uh, niyugyug siya, sabi niya, tignan mo doon sa bintana, look baby, that house across the way is trampling over. Wow. Well, Eighty na ob na raw. This man, he just mumbled something, bumulong-bulong lang siya, went back to sleep. No? Bumalik lang siya sa pagtulog, waking up the next morning with his house still intact. Yung bahay niya, nandoon pa rin nakatayo because he was built on a firm foundation. Amen. Maring itong isa, nagtayo, nagbaon lang ng tatlong hollow block, okay na yan. Pero yung isa, hinanap niya yung katigasan ng lupa. No? Ganon po, pag nagtatayo ng bahay. No? So, this friend is the story that the Lord Jesus tell in order to make the point. No? Hear me that is dangerous to hear the word without doing what it says. Dalikado po no? na pinakinggan lang natin ang salita ng Diyos ngunit hindi natin isinagawa. No? The life that lasts must be built on the word of God. 
yung buhay na nagiging matatag ay itinayo sa salita ng Diyos. The life that lasts and the service that lasts must be built in the Word of God. No? Yung buhay natin, yung paglilingkod natin sa Diyos, magiging matatag lang kapag mag, magpapawalang hanggan kapag itinatag natin sa salita ng Diyos. Know this is what Lord Jesus teaches to the end of the parable, no? First, He teaches the life that lasts is built on a firm foundation. So the parable of two builders is about hearing and doing the word of God. No? Pinakinggan at isinagawa ang salita ng Diyos. Of course, the end of this is on doing the word it doesn't mean hearing is unimportant. Hindi ibig sabihin na yung pakikinig ay hindi mahalaga. No? Sabi sa Romans chapter 10 verse 14, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? No? Paano daw sila tatawag sa isang hindi nila pinapanampalatayanan? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? Paano sila mananalig sa hindi pa nila narinig? And how can they hear it without someone preaching to them? Kaya nga mga kapatid, napakahalaga nyo sa ating society. Napakahalaga nyo ang bawat sa atin para ang bawat isang tao ay makarinig ng salita ng Diyos. No? Kinikilabutan ako sa mga salitang ito. Paano nga naman makakarinig ang iba kung walang nagpapayag? Kaya kung may mga kapatid ka, may magulang ka, may lola, lolo, kung, pa, kung pwede, pati aso. No? Ipahayag natin ang salita ng Diyos. Hearing the word of God is essential to both saving faith para masave natin yung pananampalataya at yung spiritual growth. No? So we go to point number two. It's what you do with what you know. Ito yung kung ano yung ginagawa mo sa kung ano yung nalalaman mo. Specifically, he said, wisdom is measured by what you do with this word of God. Nasusukat daw no? ang ating wisdom kung paano mo, kung ano yung ginagawa mo sa salita ng Diyos. This is the direct reference to the Sermon on the Mount. More broadly, refer that everything Lord Jesus teaches and ultimately applied to the Word of God in its entirety. Yung kabuuan. No? Dahil sinabi sa James chapter 1 verse 22, I began, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Gawin daw natin kung ano yung nasusulat, kung ano yung sinasabi. Knowledge that are not increased and well employed will only increase your condemnation. Kaya nga, 
Marami mga batang professional. Matalino, maraming alam. Pagdating sa actual, wala na. Zero. Hindi alam ang gagawin. Yung engineer, paghawak ng labi, hindi alam. Kaya, napakalaga. On hand. No? You are only deceiving yourself if you hear the word without doing what it says. Dinadaya mo lang ang sarili mo. Sa palagay niyo ba, dinaya ni Pastor Kim yung sarili niya? For 19 years, this GOCCL is still standing, strong, growing, in spite of the pandemic, we are still here. Remember, I believe with Pastor Kim, matatag siya sa pananampalataya. No rain, no typhoon para sa kanya. Kapag sinabi niyang pupuntahan kanya, bibigyan kanya ng pamphlet, pupuntahan kanya para turuan may bagyo, may baha, darating sa bahay mo yan. Kaya nga may nangyari, ang katuwiran ng isa, ay, pastor, kasi bumagyo eh. Eh, wala ako sa bahay. Nang makita niya ulit yun, binawi niya na yung pamphlet. No? Kailangan for the first time pa lang, nangako ka, ibigay mo na yung sarili mo. Kaya naging maganda, naging firm ang foundation din. Kaya sa mga remnant, talaga matatag kayo. No? Sina Dekones Nora, Brad Marlon, inabot nila yan. So, kaya nga, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. In the parable, Lord Jesus described the relationship between hearing and doing in terms of two builders who built two houses of two different foundations. First, Lord Jesus said that twice people build on the rock. No? So this is just like What is written in John chapter 5, verse 39? Ito po, no? You study, sabi dito, the scriptures. Pinag-aaralan mo yung salita ng Diyos diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. Pinag-aaralan mo lang dahil inisip mo, sa pag-aaral, magkakaroon ka ng eternal life. These are the very scripture that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Pinag-aaralan mo, pero hindi ka naman lumapit sa kanya. Paano magkakaroon ng life, ng buhay na walang hanggan? So Lord Jesus said to the unbeliever, You search the scripture thinking that in them you have eternal life, but these are very witness to me, but you will not come to that you may have life. Mark it down. You will not find light in the world unless you meet the light giver in the world. Hindi mo matitakpuan ng Liwanag sa salita ng Diyos, malibang makatakpo mo ang nagbibigay ilaw dito sa daigdig. Lord Jesus said, wise people build on the rock. Dahil sabi sa 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, 
For no one can, can, no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Siya na yung ating pundasyon. But here, Lord Jesus is not pointing himself as the rock. Hindi pinapoint ni Jesus na siya yung bato. He pointed this word, but there is no contradiction because the build on the word is to build on Christ himself. No? Dahil kapag nagtatag ka ng buhay mo sa salita ng Diyos, ay itinatag mo na rin ang buhay mo kay Kristo. Amen. The word of God carry their power in the presence of Jesus Christ. And he said, wise people build their life on that rock. No? Sino dito yung wise? Magsabi ng amen. Mahina, parang di wise ha. Sino ang wise? Magsabi ng amen. Oh. As he said in Luke chapter 6 verse 46, no? Ito ang sabi ni Jesus. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Bakit mo ko tinatawag na Panginoon, Panginoon? Eh hindi mo naman ginagawa yung sinabi ko sa iyo. No? And then sa verse 47, As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. And 48, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. No? Katulad nun, buhangin, hinanap niya sa kalaliman yung bato. Ibig sabihin, pag nilaya yung salita ng Diyos day and night, No? Isa gawa, isa buhay. When flood came, ano man problema dumating sa buhay natin, the torrent struck that house but could not shake. No? Kaya ano man dumating, problema, sa buhay natin, hindi tayo matitigating, hindi tayo matitinag because it was well built. I don't know about your friends. Hindi ko alam ang tungkol sa inyo. But I myself, I want a well-built life and I want a well-built ministry. And the Lord Jesus said, in order for your life and ministry to be a well-built, you got to dig deep and deep on the word of God. Kailangan no, maging uh, matatag na matayo ang iyong sarili, ang iyong bahay. No? Ay kailangan hanapin mo, seek the word of God daily. Seek His righteousness daily. He said this is, no? He said this to the foolish people who built on the sun. Sinasabi niya ito. Hindi ako nagsabi na foolish, it is Jesus. It is the word of God. And Matthew 7, verse 26, But everyone who hears these words of mine that does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built this house on sun. No? Sino dito maging pulis? Gusto maging pulis? Huwag <laughs> tataas ang kamay. <laughs> so, two men built two houses on different foundation. 
how do we know the houses became pretty similar? No? They may be similar in size and in structure and in material. They could look like identical houses. But there was a big difference underneath the ground. One built on the rock, Lord Jesus said, one was built on the sun. Lord Jesus must be exaggerating here to make a point. Who built a house on the sun? Yeah. Sino ang nagtayo ng kanyang tahanan sa buhangin? It is highly unstable surface. Kapag tumayo kayo sa buhangin, di ba dahan-dahan, nawawala yung buhangin sa paa nyo. Kung nasa dagat kayo, dahan-dahan, lumulubog yung paa nyo. No? It is unstable. No? Who want to build his house on the sun? Oh, we see the Lord Jesus said he was a policeman. Sinabi naman ni Jesus, he was a police. No? Maganda yung English, medyo hindi masakit pakinggan, ano? Pag Tagalog, mahirap eh. No? He is fool who built his house on the sun. Let me know for you that the way of the Lord Jesus speak this passage what about the wisdom of fool? He is not speaking of anything intellectual. Hindi nagsasalita ang Panginoong Jesus ayon sa katalinuhan. Nagsasalita ang Panginoong Jesus something spiritual and moral and ethical. No? That's why kaya nga sabi sa Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. So alam natin maraming hindi natatakot sa Diyos. The fear of the Lord. No. The other day I heard this word. It's the beginning of knowledge. But pulls despise wisdom and instruction. So if you miss it, but I tell you what's wrong on culture we live in. Ano po ba yung mga mali sa kultura natin na ating pinanahanan ngayon? Our caution is fear. Yung ating pinag-iingatan ngayon ay yung takot with foolish people who despise the wisdom and instruction of the Lord. No? Yan ang nakakatakot ngayon. There are many people in society who think that they can build their life on any foundation. Maraming tao ang iniisip na sila'y makapagtatayo, makapagtatatag ng kanilang buhay sa anumang pundasyon. And there are others who think they can build their life without foundation. Kahit wala ang salita ng Diyos, mabubuhay ako. Both are wrong. The fact is today, if you are building your life on something, it might not be in Scripture, but you are building your life on something, on money, dahil may pera ka, yung family mo, yung skill mo, yung education mo, yung pleasure, you are building your life on something. And the question on the table today is, will it last? Magtatagal ba ang buhay mo? O milyonaryo ka, tatalon ka sa from 27th floor? It's too many cases now, especially in America. No? Kaya kitang-kita yung mga psychiatrist ngayon. Eh. No? 
It will last. Will it last? Yung po yung katanungan ngayon eh. Lord Jesus said, foolish people build their life on that which will not last. Sinabi ng Panginoon Sus, ang tao, mga tao nagtatag ng kanilang buhay no, na hindi sa salita ng Diyos ay hindi magtatagal. And before you get too comfortable, let me clear this cautious state. That when the Lord Jesus speak of foolish people, building on the sun. Yung sinasabi dito ng Panginoong Yesus tungkol sa police people na nagtayo ng kanyang tahanan sa buhangin, he is not talking about what they describe as irreligious people in the world. Hindi niya sinasabi yung mga hindi mananalig, hindi nanampalataya. Hindi yun siya sinasabi niya. Ang sinasabi niya is talking about people who think they are righteous. Ito mga sinasabi niya dito. Yung mga nagtayo ng kanilang buhay sa buhangin. No? He is talking about people who hear the word. Yung mga tao na nakinig ng salita. He is talking the people who go to church at the 12 on Sunday. No? Late ako, okay lang. Worship pa naman eh, kantahan pa lang. No, wala pa naman si pastor. Hindi pa naman sermon ni pastor, okay lang. Yan ang sinasabi ni Jesus Christ. Yung mga taong yan. No? Ibig sabihin, mga ano rin to, mga Christian. No? He's talking people who think they are right with God. He's saying it's not enough just to hear the word. You gonna save your life? Mas save lang ang buhay mo doon sa katotohanan, no? Hindi lang nagsusulat ka, nagdedevotion ka. You got to do what the word says. Make disciple, no? You are full. The Lord said. If you put your life on anything but the word of God. In John chapter 6, verse 66, bago natin punta yung point number 3. From this time, Many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. So Lord Jesus asked his original 12 disciples, You do not want to live too? Do you? Sabi niya. Kayo, gusto rin ba ninyong umalis? So we go to point number three. To whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? When you walk away from the Lord Jesus, Where do you go? Kapag tumalikod ka kay Jesus Christ, saan ka pupunta? I tell you. There's nobody like Jesus. There is no better alternative. Wala kang maipapalit. Nobody live like Him. Nobody die like Him. Nobody got up like him. Nobody is coming back like him. Remember that. 
walang iba. If you walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ, let me ask you, where do you go? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? No, on verse 68, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Nasa iyo ang salita ng buhay na walang hanggan. On verse 69, We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. So nag-testify si Peter. I believe you also testify. Sa amin, saan kami patutungo? Nasa iyo ang salita ng buhay na walang hanggan. So the great passages after the Lord Jesus Christ preached the, to the crowd, performed the miracle of loaves of bread and peace. No? Ilang tinapay? Lima, dalawang isda. Ilan ang kumain? Liman libo. Bukod pa yung mga babae at mga bata. And at the end of the chapter, the crowd has left. No? He is only now with his 12 original disciples. Kaya tinanong niya yung kanyang mga disciple. But Peter said, Lord, whom shall we go? Whom shall we go? So we have to testify. Saan tayo pupunta? I hope you get the message. No? If you walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ, where do you go? Ask yourself, saan kayo patutungo? Oh, sa mga kaibigan nyo? Sa mga barangay tagay? No. Ask yourself. Remember, life to last is built on a firm foundation. If you got it, Can I hear a big amen? No? So, sa mga first time, I would like to give them the chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's power. Eh? Sa mga nasa tahanan, nasa mga live, mga first timer, that's power. Eh? And uh, just say a prayer. Just follow me. Lord Jesus, Nagsisisi po ako sa aking mga kasalanan. Pumasok ka po sa aking puso. Kayo po yung maluklok sa trono ng aking puso. I'll make you my King, my Lord, and my Savior of my life. And at ang lahat ng kalooban mo ay mapangyari sa buhay ko. In Jesus' name, I pray. And continue bowing our head and let's have a word of prayer. Dearest Lord God of Father in heaven, we thank you so much, God, for this time. We are really blessed to hear your word that you are our firm foundation, that the true righteousness we have to follow, the righteousness of the kingdom the righteousness of our Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, that it's what we do to what we know about your Lord. 
Kaya tulungan mo po kami. Help us. Na masunod po kung ano yung narinig namin mapangyari po sa buhay naming lahat. Na yung sabi ninyo, humayo kami at gawing disipulo ang lahat ng mga bansa. It's not only our family, pati na yung aming mga kapitbahay, kamag-anak. Tunay nga po at nang sa gayon po ay matatag ang kanilang mga buhay sa bato. Lord God, kayo po, yung salita po ninyo, ang tunay po na magbibigay ng katatagan sa buhay ng bawat isa. We like a happy family, a happy town, a happy province, a happy country. Kaya po, we ask you, Lord, empower us, straighten us to do your will, to make disciples, to win souls and make disciples. Salamat po, Ama. Salamat po. And we thank you for the blessing, for the empowerment, for the anointing, for the, uh, for the healing. Thank you for the right people, right connection. Thank you po for your provision, for the financial breakthrough. We know God, sagana kayo, kayo yung aming Diyos, hindi kami magkukulang. Salamat po, Ama. Salamat po. We thank you for protection. Sa mga nasa life, nasa mga tahanan, Lord, the same blessing po, the same prayer we ask for them. Lord, salamat po. At salamat po sa buhay ng mga ginamit ninyo upang matatag po ang uh, GUCCL sa buhay ni Pastor Kim Jeong sa buhay ni Pastora Josephine Lord God we praise you sa pamamagitan nila Lord God, pinupuri ka namin Lord sa pamamagitan nila ginamit mo po sila na maging matatag, maging firm na mga pundasyon ng church na ito. Salamat po sa buhay ni Pastor Jay na patuloy po you empower him to do your will, to do his best, God, according to your wisdom. Thank you po sa mga leader namin, ki Pastor Cesar Castellano sa kanyang family, sa buhay ni Bishop Oriel, Pastor Dave, Pastor Mori, na aming mga mentor. Thank you po. At sa buhay ng lahat ng mga G12 pastors, churches. Salamat po, Ama, that na kami po ay iisa sa pananalig, sa pagsamba, sa paglilingkod sa inyo. Thank you, God. Thank you. Salamat po. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All God's people say, Amen and Amen.